Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Guy Britton and I'm a mix engineer and a producer. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you one super simple tip to immediately improve your workflow if you're mixing in Logic Pro. This tip is super easy to set up, super simple, and it's totally changed the way that I've been working lately. It's allowed me to just get into a flow state when I'm mixing and not worry too much about any other distractions, other things going on. So yeah, without too much further ado, let's jump in and take a look at what I'm talking about. So basically, I'm a really big fan of systems and I like to be able to get in when I'm mixing, just be in that flow state, not have anything break it, know where things are all the time so that I can just reach for a plugin, I can reach for an EQ and I don't have to think too much about it. So I think we've probably all been in that situation where we're mixing a track and you know, you, you're know kind of listening to a track and you're thinking, for example, if I play this, I'm hearing straight away, just listening to that, like, oh, there's some top end there that needs to be taken away. So. I go over to the EQ, I pull up the EQ, I EQ out that top end. I just cut out some lows. And then I've got to close the window, get rid of the EQ, do the same for the next track, I move to the next track, I hear it. Go over, open up the EQ, some EQ moves, close the window. And this whole process of like having to open and close the windows continuously, navigate the mouse across the screen, all of these things are things that my brain is having to process that I really don't want it to be processing. So I've developed this new way of working basically, which is allowing me to remove this whole mouse clicking process and clicking around. So let me share this with you. So the first thing that I want to do is at the beginning of my mix, you can see I've got this mix set up. I haven't started mixing this tune yet. I'm going to do that today. If we look at these kind of tracks here in the middle, you'll see that none of them got any plugins in. They're all ready to go at the beginning of the mix. The mix is all edited. All the routing is set. I'm going to, I'm about to start mixing this track. The first thing that I want to do is select all of these tracks. So we're going to go over here from, uh, let's go from this track here all the way across to all the synths and the vocals, not to my buses. Uh, we're going to go up to about here somewhere. These tracks that I've selected now, are all of the kind of instrumental tracks that are not the drums. What I'm going to do is select them and then I'm just going to go to the first insert slot in the channel strip. And I'm going to add in the vintage console EQ. And then after that, I'm going to add in the standard channel EQ. The important thing is when you go to insert the plugin is to not select like stereo or dual mono, just click on the actual name of the plugin itself. Don't go into the stereo or dual mono or mono uh, settings. Just literally click in the list where it says vintage console EQ. And what that will do then is that will assign whether or not it's a stereo or mono plugin based on the type of channel. So for example, we can see here on a mono channel, we've got a mono instance and in the stereo channel, we've got a stereo instance. And that's really important because I don't want to be adding stereo plugins to mono channels because then it affects the panning and I, you know, let's keep mono plugins for mono channels, stereo plugins for stereo channels. So we're going to do the same again with the EQ. If I just click the EQ, uh, this EQ box up here, that'll assign those plugins to the correct stereo format. After this as well, I'm going to use a third party plugin. I'm going to use the FabFilter Pro Q um, and I'll explain why in a second. Now that we've got all the plugins set, you'll see that I've got the Vintage Console EQ to begin with, then I've got the Channel EQ, then I've got the Pro Q3. You can use whatever plugins you like. These are just three plugins that I'm using a lot in my mix. So the first plugin, the Console EQ, I'm using just for a bit of tone shaping. So I could go into a channel, uh, let's go back to the channel that we were looking at earlier, which was this one here. I can pull up that console EQ and just do some basic tone shaping with this. So I can add the low cut in and I can take away some highs. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, I've got this problem now where there's that top end. Let's EQ that out. And then if I want to be more specific, I can really kind of go in, I can dial in with the Pro Q. I can do some dynamic EQ. Um, and I know that these plugins are gonna be available on every channel in the mix, should I need them. And now this is where we up the workflow level. So the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna go into my key commands and I'm gonna press edit. And then I'm gonna search for plugin. Now you'll see down here, it says open or close audio insert one plugin window of focus track. And this goes all the way down to uh, 13, uh, 15. So we can do this with 15 different, 15 different plugins. And basically what this means is that we can assign a keyboard shortcut to open up the plugin of the track. In my case, what I've done is I've assigned the numbers one through to five to the first five plugin slots in Logic. So what this is gonna do is when I press one on the keyboard, it's gonna open up the first plugin window. When I press two, it's gonna open up the second, three, the third, and so on. Logic by default will assign these numbers to the screen sets, which basically just allows you to have different 
screen sets in Logic, but I've been using Logic for over 10 years now and I've never found a use for screen sets. So we're gonna go ahead and reassign them. So to do this, we're gonna go over, we're gonna select or open or close audio insert one, gonna hit learn by key label, and then I'm gonna press one on the keyboard and that's gonna assign that. And I can do that, go through each of these and do the same thing. You can assign this to whatever, if you do use the screen sets function, you can you know, use something else. Previously I was using shift one, but I found like even that was, I was having to think about where shift was and where one was on the keyboard. But now that we've assigned that, what I can do is literally just be mixing, you be playing the track. I can hit one on the keyboard, it's gonna bring up the Vintage Console Neve EQ. I can hit two, it's gonna bring up the Channel EQ. I can hit three, it's gonna bring up Fab Filter Pro EQ. And these are gonna be available for me at any point in the mix. The key thing to remember is to make sure that you've got this link icon up here, so that basically if I don't have that open, it's just gonna open up loads of different windows and then it's gonna become a mess and it's gonna defeat the whole object of doing this. Make sure that's on and then every time you hit a number on the keyboard, it's gonna switch between. And that's just gonna make things much easier. So now I can select any channel and it will do the same thing and I know that I can just switch between these plugins straight away. So if I need to do a bit of tone shaping, bring up the, the vintage console EQ. If I need to do something a little bit more specific, maybe some filtering, I can bring up the channel EQ with number two on the keyboard. Or if I wanna go like super granular and really get into the editing and you know, narrow band EQ, like loads of different bands, some dynamic EQ, I can use the Fab Filter Pro EQ to do that. I can also add in another plugin. Maybe I wanna use, I don't know, let's just go for the basic compressor in Logic and I can hit four on the keyboard, it's gonna bring up that. Uh, you can make this as long as you want, like I say, there's 15 different inserts, obviously you've only got sort of 10 numbers on the keyboard, so you could realistically assign 10 plugins, one through 10. For me, I don't need that, I know that these are the three plugins I'm gonna be using the most. I can have them assigned to every channel in the mix, and like I say, at any point, just be mixing, bring that up, and another thing I can do is hit V, and that's gonna close the window, and I can reopen it at any point. And that's really easy to do. It's totally changed my workflow. Like I've been mixing now with this setup for a while and I find I'm just in the flow state. It's never breaking that flow state because I'm not having to think about having to go over and open up these plugins. I can literally just hit one, two, three. Then if I want something more specific, I can go in and do that, you know, kind of manually, but I'm not having to think about it. I can just be playing the track, open that up do what I need to do, move on to the next channel, it's done. And that's the way that I like to mix. So as you can see, that tip is super simple and hopefully you can find a way to implement it into your workflow and improve the speed, the quality and the enjoyment of your mixing process. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. You can also check out my website for some Logic Pro preset packs, including my Ultimate Vocal Chains pack, which is a pack of Vocal Chains for Logic Pro, and my Ultimate Mastering pack, which is a pack of Mastering and Mix Bus presets. As well as this, I've also recently released the Ultimate Vocal Chains Waves Edition, which is another pack of vocal chains, but for Waves plugins. So if that sounds like something you'll be interested in, check it out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you soon.